I'm sure you've heard of Alexander Graham Bell, but have you heard of his greatest invention? You probably think you have, but you're probably also wrong. No, it is not the telephone. At least not according to Bell. About four years after patenting the telephone, he finalized what he called his greatest invention. He said it was greater than the telephone, which was already a transformative technology. So what invention was he speaking of? It was his photophone. And while it didn't exactly turn out to be the hit that Bell expected, it is fascinating all the same. So I decided to bring a photophone that operates on the same exact principles as Bell's to life once again. And I'll show you how to do it too. No, the photophone didn't have anything to do with taking selfies. It was actually the world's first wireless phone and it was developed long before the first cell phone call was placed in 1973. Bell actually made the first wireless call in 1880. How is this not better known? Well, probably because rather than transmitting with radio waves, the photophone uses visible light as the transmission medium. Remember, this was 80 years before the laser was invented, and the light bulb itself was still cutting edge tech. So Bell's photophone relied on sunlight and a system of lenses to collect and focus light at distances. You can only transmit just so far with this kind of a setup, and you have to consider ambient sources of light that can drown out that signal. And can you imagine if everyone in a city had a photophone? How are you going to manage all of those crisscrossing beams of light? So maybe it wasn't entirely practical. But Bell did demonstrate the device working from a distance of 700 feet. Not bad, but unfortunately, the system couldn't scale up. I guess the world just wasn't ready for wireless phones. And maybe that was a good thing. I mean, if Wild Bill was at a saloon in Deadwood looking at cat memes, or if the Ingalls girls were doing TikTok dances in Walnut Grove, the world would probably have ended long before now. But even still, it's a shame that the photophone's largely been lost to history, so I want to dust it off. I'm going to first explain how it worked, then show you a working copy of Bell's greatest invention. To wrap up, I'll explain how you can make your own. It's easier than you might think. There are two main parts to a photophone, the transmitter and receiver. This is a transmitter, and the most notable thing about it is that it contains no electronics whatsoever. A lens focuses sunlight on a flexible mirror at the end of a tube. When someone speaks into the other end of the tube, it causes the mirror to vibrate. Those vibrations, which encode the speaker's voice, are then transmitted in the light that reflects off of the mirror. At the receiver, the light is collected and focused by a parabolic mirror with a selenium cell at its focal point. The selenium cell was an early photoresistor, so as the light falling on it varied, so did its electrical resistance. Current was passed through the cell and into an electromagnetic speaker, which turned the variations back into sound. Now that you know how it works, let's make a wireless phone call 1880 style. This is my receiver. And if we look over here, you can see there's a laser. Oh no, don't look directly at it! Just kidding, it's totally fine. It shines all the way down there as far as I can go in my house to the transmitter. And the light from that transmitter shines right back here. It's refocused through that lens because I have a poor quality laser. And at the back of that cup, there's a photoresistor that the light shines on. So let's go take a look at the transmitter now. Here we are. And at the back of that transmitter, I've got a sound source. I'm going to start up some royalty-free music. And we'll go back to the receiver and see what happens. 1880 technology isn't exactly the best, 
But if you listen, you can hear the Star Spangled Banner coming through the speaker on a beam of light. This is my implementation of a transmitter. For the hollow tube, I used a pill bottle that has the bottom removed. I used a soldering iron with an old tip to go around and melt the bottom off. One end is open for speaking into, and over here, this pink part is a flexible rubber diaphragm. It's just a balloon. I took it, stretched it over the edge, and attached it with Gorilla Tape. Then I hot glued a small mirror to that diaphragm. As for the receiver, I used a paper cup that's covered in Gorilla Tape to block out ambient light. And at the back, you might be able to see in the center, there's a photoresistor. I also have a lens that refocuses light directly onto that photoresistor, which you might be able to see a lot better right about now. Current passes through the photoresistor, which is in series with a 10,000 ohm resistor. And as light from the transmitter is received, the current varies. It outputs to an electromagnetic speaker. This is much more modern than the one Bell used, of course, and with an amplifier circuit built in, but it operates on the same principles. You may have noticed by now, there's just one lens in the build. That's because I chose to use a laser instead of sunlight. The modern edition doesn't change the principles of operation at all, but it does let me avoid using most of the mirrors and lenses. If Bell had a laser available to him, I have no doubt he would have used it. I have five volts DC running through this circuit, and one important note on that, use a decent quality power supply. If it's not a clean DC signal, you might get oscillations that distort the audio. I had that happen with cheap AC adapters. Once all of the components are assembled, all you have to do is line things up. So the laser shines onto the mirror of the transmitter, which then reflects light to the back of the receiver. Then when sound is made at the back of the transmitter, it's instantly reproduced on the speaker. That's it. You've got the world's first wireless phone. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I hope you learned a thing or two and thanks for watching.